What up, fam? My next guest is the one and only Lemohang Tsipa. He's an all-round creator, but most notably known for his ability to play characters and represent our African culture globally. Ah, man. Yes, sir. Leave it better. That's where we're at. You already know the vibes. My name is Smash Africa, and I'm hanging out with Lemohang Tsipa. What's up, baby? I'm very good, sir. How you doing? Looking swaggerific. Hey, you know, sir, but a smash sets the level. We have to meet it, sir. <laughs> Can't see the mouth. Sir. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I came with a simple, you know, white golfer, and I was like, because you know, there's one thing about clothes, or at least uh, being presentable. It's showing manners. If you are stylish, you are a well-mannered man. Yes. You yes, know what yes. I mean? And I got to pay respect to you. you, so <laughs> you I'm a king of Africa. You smash Africa. Yeah, yeah, king, yeah, so, you know, yeah. African kings, we got to respect. Africa, my people. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Lemma, bro, um, I just got to say thank you so much for being an inspiration. No, thank you. Um, thank you so much for being the light. And thank you so much for sharing your story through characters. And for availing yourself to come through here, man. It's only a pleasure, my brother. Um, first and foremost, I think I met you, Buma, 2015, 2016, yeah. round about that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And the craziest thing for me is you are the same gent. I have to, man. <laughs> and over the years, <laughs> your trajectory has just been skyrocketing, bro. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you. I think it's a lot of it has to do with, you know, the foundation where I come from. I come from a small town called Mpangeni, sure. where... Um, most people know everybody. It's like seven to nine and then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll know your cousin or your sister or something, you know. Sure, so, sure. Um, if you're badly behaved, word spreads. So from from a young age, we're really conditioned to to you know behave ourselves and conduct ourselves in a in a proper manner. But I think also my parents um, being. Um, in the ministry, being um, pastors really helped mold me, you know, with, yeah. with, with all those philosophies and ways of thinking to just, you know, just be a human being. You know? I can imagine just growing up in a, you know, in a Christian household and your parents are in ministry. It must have been like, number one, it's a trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we went, we went to church Monday to Monday. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> Literally, like, <laughs> every day. Yo, man. Yeah, man, and 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 also just but knowing, knowing that that's your life, it also there's benefits to that. Mm -hmm. So it speaks to discipline. Mm -hmm. Um, it it's it, it speaks to not just only discipline but respect for self and your elders and even the young ones. Mm -hmm. You know, so you gotta walk me through like reflecting back on how you grew up mm. to the industry that you chose to be in. Yeah. And I know it was not it was not an easy ask mm. uh to your parents about, you know, convincing them like this is what I want to pursue. I want to be a creative, I want to be in the arts. Mm. What was it what was it like growing up in your household number 1 and what can you pinpoint specifically mm. that happened in your life that's that said I'm going to go and be a creative. Yeah. So I think <laughs> growing up, man, I grew up in a very loving home. Um, both my parents, you know, were, were there for us the whole time. Uh, got two sisters, one older, one younger. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was very busy with because he was a scientist and a minister, so he's like in and out the house, whatever. So we spent most of the time with my mom, but then there was a stage where they swapped and she went back to study and then he was the mm -hmm. guy who's like, you yeah. know, always looking after us. So it was it was really fun, man. Lots of love, lots of support. But my parents were academics. Sure. So the transition to the arts was was a very tough pill to swallow. Yeah. But they were very supportive once I'd convinced them. But the thing that made it challenging, my older sister at the time, shout out to her, Ofenta Tsipa, uh, Lon Chef now, she's married to a Bulgarian guy. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, at the time, she was studying actual sciences at UCT, mm. which is... Talk about, like, an institution that's the best institution for studying what she's studying. Last number Top school, tier. last number degree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top All tier. A's, yeah. Pumo Pepeni, Ducks, you know, everything. She's just killed academia. And at the time, my dad was a physicist. My mom, I think, had done her first MBA, well, master's degree. Um, so... It was wild, man. I was trying to convince them, but like, yeah, eventually, I think my mom had wanted to be a doctor, so sure. I kind of emotionally sure, used that. Sure, sure, sure. If you were a doctor from 20, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I kind of used that, and they, 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 I took a gap year where I, where I kind of worked around, did, do you know, the odd jobs, waitering, mm, mm, whatever, mm, just mm. kind of things. Mm. 
um, till I pursue, you know, the, the sustainable career that I wanted. And then I, I followed uh, the acting. So my parents um, were blessed enough to, to or blessed me with uh, the ability to study it further. Yeah. Went to AFTA. Learned a lot of stuff. But wait, the, before we even talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. Uh, tertiary, yeah, yeah. we got to talk about the, high school. Okay. Because you remember, like, yeah, and, yeah, and before yeah. high school, there was also performing in front of people, whether it's in That's the church true. or in plays. That's true. So my first encounter with the stage must have been pre-primary school. Um, we had a nativity play. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an extra. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's not a very promising start. <laughs> and then I think we, we got to redo it again at church, but I, I think I was bumped up to a wise man. Mm. I had one line, but also I wasn't a main. I wanted to be Joseph, but because I was a pastor's kid, they felt, you know, I'm clamping the tears. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys put on. So I had to wait for my dreams to really be validated. Sure. Um, and then I remember grade seven again. Yes, I auditioned for the school play. Also never landed a lead role. I was one of the... One line as I come through, say my thing and oh, dip. On the know. stage, yes, yes. So the opportunity really came in high school where we had the subject called drama. Because all of the time it was like an extramural where mm, you just mm, mm. interact with it in that period. Mm, mm. So now we got to really sink our teeth into the subjects and understand the history of it, mm. you know, play around on stage. We even got to shoot like a little short film uh, in, in high school. So that re that's really where the love for it um, was anchored but as a kid man I used to always watch movies yeah. fight with my dad all the time because he loved soccer yeah, yeah. this was back in the days yeah. of cassettes yeah, yeah. I'd record over those Chiefs and Pirates games <laughs> Yo! quick without questions <laughs> <laughs> This is Ace Ventura. Do you know who Jim Carrey is? <laughs> so, and then my thing was also with the my justification with the with the games was like, man, you know the result. Yeah, Chiefs is not gonna beat Pirates. Mm, it happened. Mm, they mm, won. Mm, you know what I'm mm, saying? So mm, I'm like, mm, you know, the, but the movie, I don't know how Van Damme's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like yeah. when you think about it now, like. Unless if, if he was thinking of becoming a coach, then yeah. he's watching tactics. You know what I mean? But whereas you are a kid who's trying to learn and this is what you love. For me. You know, yeah. you're going to gain so much more. Yeah. Good for you, man. Thank you. <laughs> and he, he used to play soccer. He used to brag about this game yeah. um, when yeah. he was in high school. Because I think he was a similar age to Dr. Kumail. And Dr. I think started playing for Chiefs when he was in high school, like the junior kind of sure, sure. But I remember him playing against, and that was his, day. so I'm like, those days, you're not gonna. Long gone. You got kids now, bro. Like, forget about this. <laughs> and you're a scientist. You know what I mean? Imagine yeah, a, yeah. a scientist who's a soccer player. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's like crazy yeah, self-actualizing yeah. though. Yeah, no, trust. A minister? Yeah. Soccer yeah. player scientist? Yeah, yeah. Damn, that would be crazy. Yeah, no, he's incredible, man. Incredible, man. Now, so because you grew up in, in, in the household that you grew up in, you are obviously interacting with more human beings than the normal child. And yeah. by the sense that like everyone from different walks of life, mm. fast forward to now, your career is speaking to that. You are interacting yeah. with people from different walks of life. And when mm. we talk about uh, a film crew and cast, mm. yo, bro, you guys know the credits. Yeah, the credits take Buma five minutes because yeah. there's so many people mm. working on this film, and now you are essentially a face because you are playing a character. Mm. How do you relate with so many people on set? Mm. And I would love to believe that you are the same, yeah, down yeah, to yeah. earth, yeah, dude. Yeah, you know but what? What has that experience been like for you? I think for me, it's just the nature of my upbringing. My dad's baby, my mom's Swana, but I was born and raised in KZN. Mm. So already every room I was in, just its infancy, it was different, you know. When I'm on my dad's side, they speak different. On my mom's side, they speak different. When I go to school, they speak different. And then, then I got to um, primary school where now there's this English thing. And then high school is Afrikaans. So I've always been in rooms of people different to me. When I studied um, film, I went to Cape Town. I'm staying with like Kosa and, you know, a different type of like kind of people that like in the culture that I've never experienced. So I've always been in rooms and around rooms of people that are very different to myself. Sure. Um, and for me, I guess it's just my way of surviving, man, and, and adapting to, to, to people. But I think... A lot of a lot of my upbringing is what prepared me for for the spaces I'm I'm moving. Like when I was a a kid, I just thinking back on it now, I was actually low key like a little celeb because like 
I'm going with my dad ministering at all these churches. And, sure. And I'm four days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. all these kids know me. Yeah, I'm playing yeah, with them, but yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like kind of that, that familiarity with strangers, you know, and learning how to build rapport quickly so you can, you know, have fun. But that's just a kid trying to play with other kids. And, and you, all you just want to do is play. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You're so a I kid, think, yeah. I think that kind of translates as you grow for, for different reasons and different things. Now it's just conversations. Maybe it's exchanging mm. information. Maybe it's working. So I think that, that kind of energy of just, you know, playing with somebody that's different from you and mm -hmm. you know finding a middle ground between you know who you are and who they are I think is a, a strength I've developed through the years from and now. you also used to play drums yeah and, yeah and on yeah. the internet they call you a former musician hey I don't know what's, why what's, what's happening Somebody got and is the music is the music coming back and, yeah. and where, where we at with that so I started playing drums when I was 11 I think at church um, but it was very much just like after church, I sure, just sure, grabbed sure. it. And then eventually, a few Sundays, in this guy, the drum was like, I'll show you a thing or two. And then he did, and then I just worked my way up the ranks and eventually got to got to headline at church. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a really great, yeah. great experience. And then I think after I graduated from high school, I kind of branched out from just gospel music, started playing a little bit of, of jazz. I had a jazz band at the time called Young Jazzy with some of my friends sure. who were like brass bands. We used to rip up metric dances and small corporate gigs. Yeah, we were yeah, yeah, in yeah. Pangeli, we were fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then from there, Cape Town happened. Uh, and there I played in a whole variety of bands from reggae to heavy metal to jazz to you name it, I, I played it. Man, it sounds like you had an entire life. I've had lives, man. Like, like you, had, <laughs> you had an entire life yeah. before you even went to film school. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's that's what also gave me that, that depth to be able to approach characters because I've also had seen so many different people. I think one of the, the strongest traits for an actor is not just to live experiences, but to observe. Sometimes I don't have to be a drug addict to know. I just need to be around them and be like, oh, okay, cool, this mm -hmm. is the vibes, whatever. So I'd, I think my, my, my life had, had positioned me around a lot of different people and a lot of you know experiences, which, which yeah, I draw from all the time. Do you think being an actor has been your calling? To some degree, I definitely think so. I think the way I was drawn to television wasn't normal. Sure. Um, my parents were very strict. My sister, the reason why she got all these A's, when we were in grade three, hey, my, my, you I are hope she doesn't your tell sister, me. No, no, no. <laughs> we had, <laughs> I was in grade one, she was in grade three, and my younger sister was, wasn't even in school yet. Sure. She, she took a, an, an unfortunate L. So there was a day, auntie, I think, was sick, so my parents left us to be responsible for ourselves. Sure. They went to church. When they came back, I think they got back at like nine at night. We hadn't changed. We're still in uniform. We haven't eaten. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't done anything. We're just there in front of the TV. So they banned TV in our house during the week. Crazy. So we weren't allowed to watch TV between Mondays and Fridays. Like as long as it's a week, you know... And uh, I think that made me love, because, you know, you hit the rebellious phase, but it made me love TV so much more. Like, every single, like, from the weekend when it's done, I'd make sure I finish my homework on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Saturday, you can't tell me nothing. Why aren't you studying? Because I did it. You can check my books <laughs> in front of the TV. <laughs> and then I know they'd be busy with, like, church things and, like, you know, just adult stuff as well mm, you know mm, so mm. in that time i'd use it to 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 binge and consume as much of it as possible so it's crazy so you were like two extremes yeah yeah so yeah. like extreme discipline during the week and yeah. you know you need to do your tasks your homework study for your test assignments etc mm. and on the weekend you're like ah. tv before church let's Feed max up. out yes, yes. This, like this brain must take in as much information as possible and i was so happy when um we got this there was this new um, DVD uh, there was a DVD you know those combos where sure, they DVD sure, sure. VCR yeah, yeah. so that one you could program the time so I'd, I used to study the, the TV the plus. manual yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, oh you the go TV through the TV plus I'd know yeah. what's playing at 1 o'clock on every channel 2 whatever and then just pre-record so you up. came with PVR before PVR trust me I think I, I think I should claim for multi-choice <laughs> <laughs> for that idea <laughs> no but yeah I was living the PVR life back in the day man but oh yeah. man that's crazy yeah that's you know when you speak about that like one of the things I think I knew in my career that I was supposed to work in music or in the, in the music space so I at home I had a laptop mm. but it did not have enough space for me to store mm. like music mm. right because back in the day we used to rip music from each other yeah 
And these other two dudes, Terrence and Tony, had PCs at home. Mm. And they got gang memory on the PCs at yeah. home. So meaning they could have all the songs. Yeah. So I would be the guy who runs around and and collect data from people who wanted songs. Oh. And essentially... Hey, you were the go, first streaming go, service. Yeah, <laughs> go rip. So, you know, when you mentioned that, yeah, and yeah. because, like, of how... I was about the music. I'll say, okay, this mixtape has X, Y, and Z. Mm. You know, there were the ones that we curated yeah. and the ones that people wanted specifically. Mm. So when you mention that, it's like we we take it for granted what we do in our early stages of life. Mm. But as it were, it would precede us yeah, later yeah. on and we'd find ourselves working in spaces that like we loved being in, but mm. little did we know that, oh, there's an entire industry. Yeah, and for know? me, I was also, once we leveled up a little bit and DSTV came mm-hmm. to the crib, E! News Channel was my, you know, remember, entertainment. Yeah, entertainment, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. That was the only thing. Yeah. Hollywood, I'm looking at these guys, I'm like, what? What life is this one? And now, I want it. Yeah, because for me, it was also like, I mean, soccer was, I was always an athletic kid. Mm-hmm. It could have been an option, but I was like, nah, man, it's cool. But also injury, it's done. Here, you just do it, dog. And like, you know, you're so cool. And everybody knows you. Yeah, and I could I could be Superman. I could be anything. I'm like, man, this is the career where I could have any career within this career. Obviously, within the box. I'm yeah, not, yeah, like, a yeah, real lawyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, for that moment, I could live that. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to live every experience. I want to know what it's like to be a lawyer, know what it's like to be, you know, That's whatever, crazy, a DJ. Man. And, you know, this thing allows me to... to. No, I know earlier on we parked this conversation of tertiary because I feel mm. like I think it's a pivotal part for us yeah. to touch on. Um, what was your journey like mm. at AVDA? Um, and looking back, you know, you just got to touch on what your journey was yeah. like. And looking back, would you ever go back and leave it better? in that space of tertiary uh, yeah. education for the arts? I think I did. I was lecturing two weeks ago there. <laughs> so I'm trying to, you know, as much, as much as I can. Um, but the experience of that place, man, was, was incredible. Um, I think we got there at a period where there was still a lot of bubbling and uncertainty. There weren't a lot of people that had, like, you know, because the people that have made it from after or were kind of still on the come up mm, in those mm, days. Mm. So it was like this, there was all this bubbling potential and then we got there and it was a wild experience, man. Like I just remember the, the acting teacher that we had in first year, she was Miss Z, you're one of the most phenomenal, crazy people I've ever met ever. Yeah. Because she would literally, we'd get on stage, I remember the first day of acting class and she's like, no, get off my stage, that's not acting. Like for everybody. <laughs> but she's just like breaking us down to like, you know, rebuild us, but like, all those little lessons, you realize, man, that's that's that stuff you need for the industry because, you know, that geared us up for that rejection, you know. Oh, yeah. And at least that's to your face because the rejection is silent for us, like, especially in our line of work. You'll audition. When you get it, they let you know. If you don't get it, it's quiet. Bon it's TV. quiet, bro. You watch it, my brother. You're like, wait, this is the, this is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the guy. So... She really, she really helped us mentally kind of understand, you know, those kind of spaces. But I think it was a really safe place to learn, safe place to play, build a network. And I think a lot of the friends that I've, that I've made, they are still my friends to, to this day. So the institution was more than just an institution, I think, mm-hmm. uh, for me and my experience, you know. And now, you know, every human being goes through rejection, mm. but not every human being responds to rejection. Mm. Some react to it. Yeah. Um, was there a point in your life where you came to terms with part of your job is rejection? And mm-hmm. how how would you say you got there and how do you deal with it? Oh, class act is how I got there. Come on. So I did class act when we were still in second year. And then all my friends auditioned. Uh, we all went like as a crew, did our thing. And then I was the only one. So it's like idols. You, there's, a, there's an audition before the TV yeah, day, yeah, and then there's yeah. a TV day. So I, we all went to the thing. All my homies made it for the TV day except for me. I'm there like, what? <laughs> my brother, I stood there the whole day. I asked for the producer. I'm like, you guys made a mistake. What are you talking about? <laughs> Producer's like, who is this kid? I'm like, no, dog. I need to, you must, like, let me at least audition in front of you guys. Like, that judge loved me yesterday. I don't know sure, who, sure. You what, know, ha- what, what went yeah. wrong? Mm. I she's just looking at this kid, she's like, ah, whatever. So they put me in at the end. 
So I go in at the end and then I do my thing and then I just remember Munin going, hmm, okay. <laughs> who later on fast forward a couple of years you know became my agent so it's a full Crazy. circle yeah full circle moment but I didn't I got rejected from class act which is where I learned that even though you know I had the talent had the drive had everything but when it's not the time for for you to do the things it's not the time so sure um yeah, man. Shout out to Abdul and Palance who obviously did well in that season and built their careers from that yep, point. Yep. I went back to school. I was like, man, you know, but like in that moment, you know, I learned that, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm not good enough because now they're my industry peers. You yeah, know, we're working, yeah. we're doing, you know, all the great things together. But it was just that moment where, yeah, you just need to be humble and understand that. Look, <laughs> it's so crazy. Like yeah. the criteria of physique yeah, is the same, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, with uh, Abdul and Palace. But yet... Mm. It's it's in how you are comfortable in your body and not trying to be yeah. another body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So when did you get to a place of being comfortable with mm. who Lemo is, the person, mm. and who Lemo is when he plays character? I think I've always been, man. I think in varsity, there's this thing that like most people, like if you know anybody that knew me in varsity, I was that guy, dog. I'd wear Crocs. 24-7, torn jeans, like the J. Cole look before he was. Yeah. <laughs> that was me, though. the hobo swag. I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And I was okay like, no, with called, it. It's called hobo chic. Hobo chic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. I was okay with it. A lot of people would always be like, ah, whatever, you know, how's this? The acting thing will never work. Got I'm like, bro, I know what I got, bro. I got yeah. the sauce, I'm easy, you yeah. know. So like people can judge. And for me, I'd, I'd use it as like a filtration system. If you're going to dismiss me just based off my appearance alone, which means you, you're not, trying to understand who I am because Ooh. you know it's a circumstantial thing you never know yeah, I mean at is. the time I was broke it like, is, I mean, it <laughs> is. So I was like look I got one pair of shoes I got these things my parents were spending so much on school I can't be bothering them every two yeah, weeks yeah, yeah the Zara dropped this yeah, but, yeah. you know they're already doing what they need yeah. to do and I didn't have time to get my own job so I was like yo dog this is my wardrobe bro so I've been comfortable with who I am you know for a very long time and for me it's like it just filters. If you're real and you're really who you are and people don't accept that, then those people aren't your people, you know. And yeah. I love that. Now, it, seg it segues nicely into the graduation. So yeah, yeah, as yeah. you graduate and you mentioned like you met your agent in an audition, hmm, crazy, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so when you graduate and it's time for you to go mm. out in the world, do you remember... Do you remember your first day on a set? And what? how small was the role? Yeah. So and how did it feel? <laughs> I, was, I was blessed to, to, to start booking in third year, mm. but it was significant, insignificant kind of like roles. I, I remember the first, first professional set I was on was a, a film called Felix, mm. um, done by Penguin Films. I tried watching it. I, it's, I struggled to find where I am. <laughs> Was he there? I, it's a very, it's a quick, it's a very quick. Um, it's Were you walking by? Yeah, yeah. You give the lead, you know, a line. Mm. I think, no, it was in a taxi, mm. but I don't know if I made it to the final edit. But for me, it was just like, man, I got paid, you know, in the mm. thousands. I was like, what, bro? When I'm in college, like it was wild, mm, you know. Mm. But I think it was young case. It wasn't mm, double mm, digits. Mm. <laughs> it was no, no. For 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 really, us who in the industry, yeah. we know. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of money because you've never seen that money. Yeah, yeah. I was coming from community TV where we were being paid like eighty bucks. Oh, at least you're getting paid. You're yeah. coming from community radio. Yeah, or yeah. campus radio. It was no pay oh, man. gigs. So so it's like you hope and pray that they book you for a cricket MC gig. Yeah, yeah. Or like a DJ gig. That's yeah. when you get the money. But it's it's we 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 need not invalidate it because yeah, the yeah, feeling yeah. that oh came, no I was a superstar I was inside I, I thought I would get a trailer and oh. <laughs> gazebo <laughs> you got, got a gazebo got a gazebo from, that from I shared from trailer to gazebo yeah. <laughs> shared with a few other people but no man it was a humbling experience and just like just great to know that you know it was f like affirming in a sense that. I know that I'm moving correct for somebody in the industry doing an actual thing to be like, yo, dog, yeah, just come join us on this thing. I was sure. like, wow, man, I'm in the right place. And I think I'd, I'd understood, you know, all the training and, and I'd seen like how it was paying off. But the first official, official, like proper role where I could speak and you can watch the movie and see me <laughs> <laughs> was the first film I did when I graduated called Alien Outpost. Sure. It was an American film, so sure. we thought we were going to Hollywood. We're like, bro, 
<laughs> starting with the Americans and you know it was actually quite a big deal because the director of that film was, he's a big deal he's the guy who who did the visual effects for the small um, um, series you might have seen it called Game of Thrones I don't know if you've come on yeah 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 flex no 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 yeah, yeah. small it's young it's I mean, a young it's, yeah, it's a young thing you might catch it somewhere <laughs> Um, so he was the visual effects, like the head guy there, yeah. just won an Emmy for it. Like yeah. literally, I think his mail came in while we were on set. So we were like, dog, we're with the guys. And the guy, I think Eddie Yang, who was designing the suits, had just worked on the Superman when Henry Cavell was Crazy. announced. So we're in the rooms with the guys, dog. So like we thought, yo. But the film didn't obviously do as well as we'd, we'd mm -hmm. heard. That's mm -hmm. why I'm telling mm -hmm. you about it. <laughs> and also... yeah. But that's not your loss. No, 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 not you at show, all. You not show, at all, you man. showed up. You showed up. On, it was a win on, in on every the set. Way for you us. knew your lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were not hard to work with. Yeah. And you got paid. Yeah, no, it was a win <laughs> in every way. You know what but I mean? Yeah, it was a win in every way. I think um, for us, and I, I got to work with one of my close friends, Tabs, who like we literally studied together from um, first year, went all the way through. So I had like a comrade that like you mm. know, where they're like bro that we're new doing struggle. this thing yeah, yeah, we are inside know? now so um, yeah man it was a great experience one of one of my most memorable and like it's the, in the genre that I that I still foresee myself working in the most which is action yeah running around with guns shooting aliens what do you mean Shagay Lembe is packed with action yeah no that's that's the, that's I'm glad it's it's following through and that's I think since then um, I've only done few things, but like I'm hoping that this this I just want to be John Wick dog. Like that's <laughs> that's all I want. Jackie so Chan, John the, Wick. The crazy thing yeah. about Whoa, John Claude Van Damme. Those names. Those are literally characters that are portrayed by generations. Mm -hmm. You know, like if if you are a boy or a girl and who loves film and who loves action and that's what you want to be yeah do you know what i yeah. mean so and and i think you are that for yeah. many yeah, african yeah. kids Shout out. i yeah. think you are that for many african kids but we'll we'll get on we'll get into that uh, conversation in just a bit now let's let's talk about when when you you fumble mm -hmm. right like it's like a day on the set mm. just like have so much on your mind you know the lines mm. You I, know what you I need to a, bring. <laughs> a bad fumble story, man. Come on, let's hear it. So, um, I've been very blessed in my career to just be involved in like projects. Who, looking back, I don't even know how I got on there. I'm like, what? So I was on Homeland. Um, they did season four. They were shooting in 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 Joburg, Come on. In Cape Town. So I had a small role there, but I was just glad to be there. So, um, literally, I'm sitting on a pivoting chair like this. I'm operating a drone. <laughs> And then I have a scene with Rupert Friend, Claire Danes, and um, I forgot the name of this other guy. He's also a big actor. He's got an Oscar as well. So, like, these are, like, Hollywood A-listers. Sure. Uh, it's day one. They're still just trying me out, you know, to see if I do well, they'll increase the days or whatever. I have one job. I have to turn around after they're seen and say, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's not a lot happening. <laughs> given an instruction. Okay, I... I'm inside. Yo, when I swivel, I make eye contact with Claire Danes. And I'm just in a movie now. I'm like, this is Claire Danes, dog. This is, this is actually Claire Danes, dog. Like, I, I'm like, this is Rupert Friend, the guy from Hitman. And wow, I'm looking at this, I can't forget his name, but he's also done like, no, I'm like, wow. And all I hear is, can't. <laughs> Brother, we need you to. <laughs> They've just delivered like a four minute scene behind me of just technical hitting marks, like doing all this tech, like high level. And I just got to, yo. So for me, that moment, I just remember afterwards. But the director understood. He could see, man, it's like, ah, this guy's a kid or whatever. He's like, no, relax, man. And I think Rupert and I had a conversation. We went outside in between because they had to reset up. Got outside, had a little chat, and it kind of calmed me down just to connect with him as, as a human being. But yeah, that was... That was my biggest fumble. Like, I could have not made it to the edit. <laughs> also, you right. could have decided not to be an actor anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of that fumble. And then Rupert stepped you out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. spoke to you. Just like a big brew. And essentially, he mm. left it better in terms of you fumbling mm. and being able to pick yourself and like, okay, we'll do, we'll do another take. Yeah. And because, then he, because Lemo is here yeah. and he's new. 
why is it important to always leave it better than you found it in your personal capacity? My, well, for, for the thing, firstly, to be, if you really love it, you surely want it to live. I mean, beyond even you, you know. So for me, it's that. Like, I, I love this game so much. I want it to, to live beyond me. And I think I am today standing on the shoulders of giants. One of the guys who I'm so blessed to, to share an agent with is Dr. John Kani. Mm, um, mm. I study this guy in my textbook, you know, so if he didn't do the things, I wouldn't have studied him, I wouldn't be sitting here. Sure. So for me to do this, I don't know who I'm touching, I don't know who's watching this or my works or whatever, you know, that I do, that will maybe be the next Tuso, you know, so, or Trevor, or, you know what I mean? Anybody yeah. to be really impactful in the game and on the culture. And I think what we do is also, um, a massive preservation, you know, as Shaga is, of our history and the telling of who we are to the world. So I think what we do is very important and it's important to leave it better to allow other people to continue to tell our stories. Mm. Oh man, it's so beautiful. Now I want to talk to you about Shaga Ilem. Yeah. What a show, what a production, what an amazing story, what an amazing celebration of our heritage. And... What a top tier looking product. Oh, yeah. My goodness. Shout out Zeno and the what team. What an amazing yeah. soundtrack. Mm. My goodness. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, what amazing yeah. acting. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. Thank you. Bro. Everybody showed up. And it just recently has been revealed that if it's nice, we play it twice so the season two, not a repeat. Hey, it's ABC one. Them <laughs> Nandi <laughs> <laughs> Run it back. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So walk me through. I mean, there's so many things we can touch on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the first thing, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in the prep work. Mm. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm just interested in the amount of letting go you had to go through. Mm. To be in that character. Mm. Growing up in Pangini, people are hitting you up. Yeah. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah say, bra. Yeah. You yeah. are, Shaga. Yo, yeah, no, it's real. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's the craziest thing, like, especially being from a place where, like, I mean, that's where one of his, um, um, uh, not pre what's the predecessor? What's the person who takes over after you? Successor. Successor. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So after twelve, it goes. Yeah, on. the bundles. Yeah. <laughs> so one of his successors, Ukodrai, is actually King Ukodrai. Was the, it's the region in which I grew up in, and then the re the place where he Ushara, actually had his base camp and set up like his kingdom. It's like a twenty minute drive from my house. So like it's it's a surreal thing to Crazy. represent, you know something literally close to home, you know, that, that I do call home. Um, but, yo, man, I don't know. It, it's, it, it, it sinks in in waves. There's moments where I f sleep and forget, and then I wake up, I'm like, wait a minute. This is, this is wild, dog. It's like, you know, for those who can't relate, it's like being a Mandela or playing a Jesus role. Sure. It's like something that symbolizes and means so much to so many people. It's, it's surreal but i'm i'm honored to to have been now how much that. did you have to let go bro oh man for playing this role there's a lot there's a lot because um i'm nothing like the king man i wish i wish i was that great that's know? why i'm asking you <laughs> yeah. why how much did you have to let go i don't know i just had to trust the team and the guidance i had to trust the script i had to trust the research that was done i had to trust you know everything that, that I was just being guided. And I think, you know, the journey that we undertook was a very, very spiritual experience. Um, so I think it, for me, letting go is just the process of, of acting where, you know, it's very boring to see me on screen the whole time because every, like after the fourth movie, you're like, ah, this guy is just doing the same thing, you know? So it's, it's kind of an integral part. So it's like something that I don't really think about that much, but I just kind of instinctively do. But, I just trusted the team, trusted the script, trusted everything around me to guide me. And I think the, the, the spirit as well was, was there to, to make sure that we're moving in the right place. And we had, you know, all the people from, from the royal house, you know, that were the relevant people there to, to help guide us as well. And um, yeah, for me, it was that, man. And the so. reason why I'm asking you, how much did you have to let go? Mm. Because your past experiences... Mm essentially make us mm, mm, mm. and when you go into that setting and that space mm. you can easily want to draw from what you have experienced yeah. and i don't think mm. you have ever experienced what you experience on the shaggy lembe set never never 
the magnitude mm. it has had mm, mm. on a people, mm. on a continent. Mm. Yeah, I, for, I don't know, man. It's hard. That's why I say it's the spirit, bro. It's I crazy, wish I could man. take credit. I wish I could, but it's crazy. It wasn't. It wasn't like my intellectual capacity. It wasn't the acting skills. It wasn't like a lot of what I brought to it. You know, I think that surrenders is, is, mm. is, is you know, and just trusting, trusting that, and and yeah, I think a lot of the things that helped fuel it were, you know maybe like you know certain parallels that that i shared with the with the king and this journey because when i was first announced people were like what this guy and Not shaga's that. you know his story was that like when people were like this is great king even his dad's like it's me dog can't be this nigga you know and then you grow into it and people once they see him in you know full flight understood and i think that that parallel kind of kind of happened with with the way you know we we did it and how it played out but i think that's the closest thing the rest man it has to go to our we can't there was too many spiritual encounters on that on that project with them you know coming through guiding us showing us hey when we're doing things a little bit too western or a little bit too ah they would pull oh, out dog ah it's not a game there for dog. real yeah and the crazy thing is like a lot of people don't believe us and i'm like dog you just it's not a moment where you can oh where's my phone let me <laughs> you know what i'm saying even you're crazy. just like it was wild dog that's why i think this piece resonates so much i think when people watch it there's this connection to it you know because i think all of us as well joining from cast crew catering whoever you know we're, we were immersed in it and could feel you know a connection bigger than just it being a job bigger than it just being a project of us capturing history it was us telling stories of people who were very important in, in, in placing us where we are today. And leaving it better than you found it. They, you know, they left it better for us. Because, uh, you know, you, this is not a, this is not a um, film podcast, so I'm not yeah, trying yeah. to find yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was VFX. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to find if the spears were real. Yeah. I'm not trying to find out the stunt um, mm. um, choreographer and how much work they... No, mm. no. I'm trying to have real conversations yeah, yeah, yeah. where the at least... The premise of this podcast speaks to the mm. message behind it. Leave it better. Mm. When you look back, mm. obviously now they say, guys, it's a rap. Mm -hmm. And this episode, the first episode is, mm. you know, what is one thing that you would say your colleagues did for you that you will never forget? just inspire me man um there was a lot of young actors that were there tim goes in table for example um boy what a what an actor oh, Dog, those, those guys range, he, he lights he lights a fire under your butt because like you know you work you get comfortable you feel like no i'm at a point now where you know it's not necessarily arrogance but you feel like you're good it's like being a soccer player sure. you know you're walking on the field you know they say through pull your head up but yo that boy was a young Messi, and I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta step up, you know. So I think just inspiring me, dog, on a, on a very deep level and challenging me to push myself further, you know. Um, there were certain things, like for example, me, I do not like the cold at all, bro. Like anybody knows me, I'm even here in a jacket. I make sure that I'm warm at all times, and obviously there, the conditions we were in were not ideal. We shot during winter on a farm; it's cold. This boy would push through rain scenes, would push through water scenes and not even cry, not complain, just come to work. And I'm there like the minute my count comes off, hey, when you say cut, please. So like little things like that re-challenge you to be like, wow, am I doing it right? Am I viewing it right? So I think all of them in different ways, that's very specific to, you know, Tembi's story, but every single one of them, there's, there's, a, there's a thing that I'd observe from them and learn and be like, wow, I can take this back, you know, with me to, to, to learn to, to make myself a better person and a better actor and a better human being. So, Let's take it back. Do you remember your first experience driving? First experience driving a now, car. Now, yes. <laughs> yes. Can you drive? Yeah, yeah, okay. very, very, very. Well. Here's, here's my license. I'll show you the back. So um, uh, let's so. see, let's see. Uh, Kim Metropolis, it expires. And I think Wang. Yeah, no, this one, this one expires in 2027. Yeah. So it's still working. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I'm not talking about when you got it and how you got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not talking about your driving lessons. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm talking about the first experience of yes. you 
putting in that key. Because I know you did not have a push start. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> what car was it? Um, How did you get there? And what was the experience like? So it started with. Uh, my older sister at the time, she's the one who learned how to drive first because obviously the hierarchy, age, whatever. Mm, mm. I think she was 17. Mm. So she qualified to get a learner's, got her learner's, everything. Mm. And then um, she would always, my dad would let her park the car. So he'd come home, leave it in the driveway at the top and be like, yo, give her the keys. And I'm sitting there like, man, I'm so jealous. Yo. <laughs> you know, so one day I kept bothering and bothering and bothering him. And then he was like, I... I'll teach you, but we live on a, on a road that has a cul-de-sac, so sure. it's like kind of a, a circle. Sure, vibe. sure. So he took me to the thing, gets out, and then he said, I won't forget. It was a Daewoo. We used to drive Daewoo's uh -huh, back in the uh -huh. day, the microwave cars. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> Appliances. We had two, even. We had, we had a Lanos, which was the sleek one. It looked like those Hondas, the sexy. And then there was the... Um, what is that? Oh, Nubira. But the Nubira was the beast. Two litre mm, back mm, in the day. Mm, Yo, mm, mm, mm. The car would open up. So he gave me the 1.6, the small one. And then, yo, I've never seen my dad that panicked. He's just sitting there freaking. And there was a stage. Did he swear? No, no. He, he was a Christian man. He didn't swear. <laughs> but I remember there was a stage. He grabbed that steering wheel from me and the handbrake. He was like, what? Because he's given me instructions. But for me, I thought I could drive because I used to play Need for Speed. So sometimes you're flexing, you look to the side, but I'm a kid. <laughs> so I'm looking at him for the instructions. Yo, I'm going to the car. No, like, so, oh no, you're going. Yo, and he's just mad at me. But yeah, it was it was a very adrenaline-filled one round around the block. Uh -huh. And I think I built my confidence then up after that day. He never let me drive for like a month after sure, that. Sure. He was like, nah, you, sure. I don't think you're ready. Sure. So then I used to park the car and stuff also with my sister help her and then yeah from there I was trusted with the car I think from like 17 so the reason why I asked this question yeah. it's a question that speaks about starting at zero mm -hmm. you know yeah. and a lot of times like you watching this could be harsh on yourselves like will, will I ever get my break when is my break going to ever happen and mm. but the truth is first you need to f come to understanding that you must start Mm. with nothing yeah you not knowing anything yeah and if you come out and you feel like a failure it should just last if it's for that day by the time you go to sleep at night mm, mm, mm. you let go of it and yeah. say i will build confidence to try again the next opportunity i get mm. but now you've got a license and he's shown me his license he's the first guest by the way <laughs> so, <laughs> class. so the other stories, guys, you need to send through your licenses. Maybe they grew up in Joburg. Yeah. We know. <laughs> <laughs> anything. Yeah, anything playing, is possible. Playing. Anything is possible. Yeah. But, bro, um, to wrap it up, um, what would you like to be remembered for? Man, I think, first and foremost, just the work, you know. I think I'm, I've been very particular about the pieces that I choose. Mm. Um over the years and very blessed to be in that position but I want everything that, I, that I'm that i attached to, to to kind of resonate with people on t and be a teachable moment in every mm. in every way another thing I want to be remembered for is just like the, the guy that said anything's possible and did it you know like mm. came from a small town told people yo I'm going to do this acting thing I'm doing it now I'm telling y'all now I'm doing the music thing so when you see me at the Grammys play this interview back and be like oh Oh, this nigga wasn't capping, you know. Mm, mm. So basically, like, just dream big, man, and and fight for it. You can achieve it, you know. So it's like a double-edged inspirational thing that they can, mm. you know. So which means you also got to do the directing, the cinematography thing too. Yeah. Oh, and trust all of it. Trust me, trust me. It's all gonna the ma the music's what's gonna help segue it through my music videos. Ah, and so, but yeah, sick with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Lemo, bro. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much uh, for chatting, and yeah. Always leave it better than you found it. Smash Africa, I appreciate you commenting, liking, and subscribing. Till the next episode, stay happy and make money, baby. <laughs>